up there in Pikes National one day it's raining, snowing, hailing, sun's out, but it changes so much, so rapidly. Um, and that, that's just the way that the, being in the mountain is, yeah. So it's important for people to be prepared for that kind of stuff when they do go up there. Uh, my name is Deputy Rick Garcia. Um, I work in District 8, which is the Pike National Forest. Okay, so about a week ago, I was dispatched to um, Rampart Range Road, the, the south end. And um, the call I originally got was um, a truck um, was stuck in the, in the snow and they couldn't get out. It was about 15 miles deep in, in the snow that I had to get to these to find them. And um, when I did find them, um, they were stuck in the snow pretty, pretty good. Three gentlemen, a father and his two adult sons. Um, I asked them, what are you guys doing up here? And um, they said, um, turkey hunting. Like, we got them onto the road, um, but it has, as soon as we started moving, just um, a few yards, 10, 20 yards, they would get stuck again. It was starting to get dark, it was snowing heavily. Um, I was starting to get concerned if I would even be able to get out of there myself. Um, so I made the decision to take one of the guys with me. I had, I had room for one guy in my truck because of all the equipment that I, that I do have in there. I did drive him out to Woodland Park. Um, on the way there, I started our search and rescue um, because I thought we need to get these guys out of there because it's gonna start snowing and, and they're stuck and they were also low on gas. I am Dave Arnett. I'm the field director for Douglas County Search and Rescue. Uh, I tried driving in with um, high clearance four wheel drive trucks. The snow was already very high by then. Um, trees falling down in front of and behind those vehicles as they were going in. So it got very interesting. Got as far as we, we could, then went on snowmobiles from there, but same problem with trees and really deep snow. Our, our job as volunteers is to, to go and keep on going and, and get um, sub subjects out. But this was um, very challenging in that sense because of the conditions and because of how far in they were. What we saw in those conditions was really wet, heavy s snow. Our snowmobile riders all um, became soaked through quickly, went through multiple change of gloves, clothing, everything, and biggest threat was, tr was trees coming down, not only in, in front of, uh, on the trail, uh, on the road that had to be cut through, but behind also trapping. So there was a lot of go a bit, pause, cut, 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 go a bit, pause, cut, we went back and we cut through many, many trees by hand. And then we got to a point in the road where we couldn't see any clearance after so many trees. So we, and it was, it was pitch black up there. So we thought we better just turn around. And that's when we turned around and they made the call to, um, I think National Guard to start a helicopter up there. And that's when they rescued the other two guys the following day. We will always come. But the more preparation that folks can do in terms of bringing extra food, bringing ex extra water, having that full tank of gas, full, full phone battery, heat source, the more time we have under these challenging conditions to get to them. There's, there's, no, there's no time clock. You, you gotta, you gotta, that's what we're up there to help people out and, and serve, serve the community, serve the hunters, serve the, serve the fishermen, the campers, the community itself. So yeah, when, when the job's done is when I'll go home. I think I worked 22 hours straight that night. It's a wonderful collaboration. I think it included 38 folks overall, roughly 400 hours worth of work across those 38 folks. 3,000 miles traveled, not counting air miles as, as part of it. So just great teams working together throughout this. And we're very, very grateful for that.